Okay, what's this? The raptor? <laughs> oh my. What what's that? What makes a sound like that? T-Rex. Do you even like T-Rex? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, do T-Rex again. How's T-Rex do? <laughs> Alright, back to S10 Race Truck Diaries. Um, today, we've got Joe Fry here, and we're working on the hood. So, when we put the wastegates in this spring, we had to put this slot in the hood, and it really took a lot of structure out of it. And we tried to build this hood as lightweight as we could. And so when we did that, it uh, just really made it pretty floppy. And we were having some problems with this area. It was actually wanting to fold under the windshield when we would come back from a run. So we made ourselves a little uh, mold to set the hood in. And put some weights on it to hold it in place the way we want it. And Joe's trying to run this... Uh, foam cord around and apparently it's not wanting to stick very well. I got sanding dust. Okay, yeah. Um, so we're going to run this foam cord around and then we're going to overlay it with fiberglass and that's going to give us some structure that should help uh, stiffen everything back up. So uh, hopefully we won't have to fight that as much anymore and we'll have a nice rigid hood in the shape that we want it. Firepunk Strongman competition right here. 1,513 pounds. Big old hunk of slab of granite. That man right there says he's going to pick up his side. I don't, I don't believe it. I can't pick it up. <laughs> what I thought. Your mouth is bigger than your uh, muscles anymore, huh? Alright, Josh. What can you pick up your side? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Damn, that thing Wow. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Can I have that part for my blanket tonight? Yep. Make sure we keep the scrap pile back there. I'm going to put it all in under my covers tonight and get extra itchy. Getting the glass mat cut to shape. Getting it all laid in place and then we get the this I tear it, so that oh, way okay. it leaves a nice smooth when, uh -huh. I, when I graft into that it. Makes you don't sense. see that edge uh -huh. like a straight line. It'll look mostly seamless by the time you epoxy it in there. Or, I don't know if you call it epoxy or what you call it. Uh, it's it's uh, polyester resin. 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 Uh -huh. Oftentimes I like to think that I can do things, but then other times I know that I'm just better off letting the guys that are really good at doing it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like I said before, I don't know if I'm any good at it. I just experience goes a long ways. Check it out. We have got us a rear end again. Got that thing back in there. The wishbone is flipped around. I put it in there with like one hand without any desire to say which is a vast improvement over what we had. So that's good. Shocks, upper shock mounts are done. Got the little red springs in the shocks and the anti-roll bar. Got everything done with that, except still need to do links, which should be pretty simple. Um, but really happy with how that turned out. So just simply cut the thing in the middle, spliced it, put a tube up inside of it, welded it all back up, and moved the arms way to the inside of the spline was able to keep it in the same location didn't really have to move that much so pretty happy with how that turned out now to put tires in it and see how hard we're going to have to uh, massage the bed sides to make these things have clearance did some reinforcement here so got this all done up uh, ended up just putting some foam rope underneath that and then overlaying it with ounce and a half uh, fiberglass mat did two layers of it so just waiting for that to set up some more and then come tomorrow uh, take the weights and everything off and probably just run a little bit of light sandpaper over it to get some of the the last of the scratchy hairs that are sticking up and do some cleanup and hopefully that thing will be rock solid and not near as floppy and easier to go on and off and we won't have to fight it as much 
uh, when we put it on and it won't flip under the windshield when we go fast hopefully. Alright today we're working on putting dual chutes on the S10. Uh, currently just or up until this we just had a single chute and it's done the job just fine for us but we're kind of starting to reach speeds where we really should have dual chutes and a couple of the race organizations that we go to occasionally uh, want two chutes. So working on that today just ended up getting a Tim McCamus dual chute mount kit. This hoop here comes all welded up real nice. I ended up putting a little bit of a bend here in the middle to get the chutes a little bit of an angle so that when the air launchers get put in here it shoots the parachutes apart from each other a little bit so that they're not just parallel shooting straight out the back. Um, in my eyes is a little bit less chance of tangle up so put a couple bends in there and then got the dual shoot mount welded up had seen something similar to this on ryan's car and really liked it so i called the guys up at tin soldier asked if they would sell a kit like that they said they didn't have anything they said they just worked with the tim mccamus kit and kind of made their own bracketry so i kind of did the same thing so yes i copied them and no i won't make you one but it is a really nice design, seems to work out real nice. Gets this push bar all incorporated right in here. So um, getting that, have it all tacked together. Cody needs to do some finish welding on that. Working on putting the air launchers together. These are pretty simple, just air cylinders here that push this guy out. So once the chute's all packed up, there's a switch that you flip that charges pressure on the cylinder. And then when the cable gets released, it pushes the pack right out of there. So pretty simple. Getting everything bolted together. So it shouldn't be too much longer to get this together. And then I have to add the second release cable and make a couple of little mounts for these, for this cable to attach. I haven't for sure decided where yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. from National Trails uh, went out there this morning and we really wanted to get a few hits in today but uh, ended up settling for one got there and they had a pretty full track so they really had a good turnout for their event today and uh, we waited around for I think between three and four hours to get our first pass in and the first pass went okay we ended up we had a really good 60 foot we went 107 to the 60 foot the G meter looked really good uh, the truck didn't do anything crazy we have some things to work out on. I uh, need to make a little bit of adjustment on preload and uh, also had some issues with spooling and uh, air to fuel ratio. Uh, looking at the logs, it looked like we were, um, we actually have a little bit of an issue with one of our spool solenoids. So we need to pin that down. But all in all, we figured out that the truck was mechanically sound and we don't have any major issues going into next week. And that's really what we were after, making sure that we're ready for test day at Shide on Thursday. So. Uh, settled for one and saw that rain was coming in so we packed up and rolled home so we'll uh, kind of pick up where we left off next week. <laughs> 